helped. Well, he lived in squalor and he was in the media. Okay. You think he's the only one in the media who lives in filth, plays with porn and toys? You think he's the only one in the media who can put on a clean white shirt and tie and give you a smiley face and then give you the news that someone else writes for him? You think he's the only one? I kind of doubt it. Let's go to the Drudge Report, which is the king of all websites for news. Everyone looks at it every day. I know I do. And let's see what he has to say. Biden tops poll. Trump trounces. Pollsters dumbfounded by Trump. Lean campaign structure breaks the mold. Bush versus Clinton may not happen. Oh, that's a great soundbite. I got to play this one for you. This is Jeb Bush siding with puny visions, Jorge Ramos, against Trump to show you how desperate this Republican functionary is, this, uh, this Jeb Bush. Listen to clip number three on the Savage Nation. Governor, did you see Jorge Ramos taken out of a... I, I guess that we can't even get... about that? <laughs> I didn't see a whole lot of, like... People in the side, the side of the press saying, whoa, whoa, time out, wait a second. You were surprised? Yeah, I thought you guys would, you know, unite. So there's Jeb Bush saying, I thought you guys would unite against Donald Trump. Can you believe this man? Yeah, that's exactly who he is. Of course you can believe this man. Why wouldn't you believe this man? Well, I don't believe a word the man says, but you can believe that this man is not going to be president. The Bushes can't pull another fake on us again. Uh, here's a has-been named Dan Rather. You may, you may remember him. He was once in television. He got thrown off television, I don't know how many years ago. I don't know why MSNBC would dig him up. But here's the has-been Dan Rather attacking Donald Trump in clip number six. Let's treat, let's Reporter see that Reporter says to myself, get paid not to be cynical, never cynical, but to be skeptical. I'm a little suspicious, without very much evidence, but I'm a little suspicious of this battle between Trump and, and Fox. Uh, what we do know is that Trump is really smart. As I said, when he started this run... I'll turn him off. I, I was never a Dan Rather. This guy should be teaching journalism in a junior high school in, in Mexico. Is he bilingual? Because if he's bilingual, I think I can get him a job in Guadalajara teaching journalism. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You live for a new pair of sneakers? Or you like Louis Farrakhan? Do you live to hate? Are you like Obama? Do you live to uh, hate people so much that you divide a nation that was so good to you? Or what do you live for? What is your MO, in other words? What's your motivation? To hurt people? To heal people? You go to an emergency room, you can see saints in the emergency room. I know it's popular to bash doctors, but go into an ER room in any big city and you will see saints at work taking smashed, broken bodies and saving most of them. They have a reason to get up every morning, don't they? And we used to have a military that had a reason to live until Obama gutted the military of, of all inspiration to, to, to protect the nation. This man is so destructive. You don't understand how evil, how powerful evil is. Many of you don't even understand how strong evil is. You look at him and see a skinny guy with weird ears. You don't know that he is pure malevolence. And he is so good at his malevolence that he has literally taken the heart out of America. He has, he has evaporated the inspiration for many people to go on. He has given people no reason to live. He has demoralized the entire nation with his enmity for this nation, especially towards white people. I know that you don't want to hear it, and you know, it, yeah, it's not true. It is true. Oh, it is true. Everybody knows that. Everybody who really knows what's going on, knows what's coming out of this administration, is pure racial hatred. I can give you one example after another. I can give you the latest one. They hired that flop Dick Gregory. Government money. Black comedian Dick Gregory. U.S. federal agency. He delivers an anti-white racist tirade at a federal agency. It came out in a secret investigation by Judicial Watch. Paid for by the government. And he gave a speech, Dick Gregory, attacking white people. With federal money. To the cheers of the clapping black bureaucrats who hired him. It's rampant. It's like South Africa before the fall. That's what America has become under this administration. America is now living in a new place. America is now living in a new age of nihilism. A level of nihilism 
that I have never seen in my lifetime. I mean, you can say who brought it about. You could say what did it. You know, left can say the right did it uh, with too much money in politics and too much preaching about morality. And the right can say it's the left because they're anti-American. The fact is we're living in a new age of nihilism. What is your inspiration to go on? What keeps you going? Many people who believed in this nation, who once believed in the political system, who once believed in a future, who once believed they would leave a better nation and a better world behind, have given up. This man is like the, uh, well, let's just leave it at that. And so people are saying, what, what are they supposed to do? They feel lost. So I'm asking another question today, which is what is your inspiration to go on having been detached from all of these other you know, possible constructs? What do, you, what do you do? When you have a good meal and a glass of wine? I mean, how, how many good glasses of wine can you have? And if you're young and you're in college, Animal House is your answer to a good life, right? Just have a good time. Parents say, you know, do what you want to do. You're only young once. And so you want to be with drunk girls. You want to vomit on yourself. But what are you really doing? I mean, what are you living for? Do you really think anyone's buying that act? What exactly are you doing? So you become what? You become something in life. Many of you think you're an artist. And so by being an artist, you think that by smearing garbage on a wall and being more outrageous than the other artists, you're going to stand out. And maybe you'll stand out, but you, you, you in your heart know it's a con and that you're not an artist. You know you have no talent. You know you have no talent to be an artist because you have no discipline. And you can get away with it in your 20s, perhaps, and then you're going to have to get a real job. Or many of you think you're a writer. And if only the um, heathens who ran the publishing industry would see how great you are, uh, they would find out that you're the great American novelist. But in your heart of hearts, you know you can't write. You can't even get a job as an ad copywriter for a book company. You couldn't even get a job as an ad copywriter for a dog food company. Because you know that. You sit in your house or your cafe and you put on outfits and airs and you walk around like you're better than everybody. You use drugs. You get stoned. You get high. And you convince yourself that you're really a great writer. Now, one day you're going to come to understand that's not going to pay the rent. And then you're going to have to really do something with, you, with your life. So people are asking themselves who are older than the young, well, what should I live for? What's the point of going on? Well, I don't know. Really good restaurant? Oh, look at the restaurant that opened over there on the other side of town. I hear that their food is really good. I'll go there and enjoy a real Epicurean meal. Napa County. Napa County, San Francisco, real Epicurean delight stepping over fecal matter in the street and putting up with bums who try to rob you. But, but forget the bums. I'm asking you what you're living for. Well, okay, none of you, some of you don't live for that. Some of you live to save the earth. Some of you live to um, abort babies. Your idea of salvation is to abort babies, to chop them up and sell body parts. And you convince yourself that you're doing something for, the, for humanity and, and the health of women. And then you become an insane old harridan like Barbara Boxer you actually argue that it's about women's health to sell baby body parts. That's how insane you become if you keep that up. I can talk about food. I can talk about China. I can talk about Africa. I can talk about climate and the climate plans of Obama. I could talk about the civilian deaths in Syria. Obama has authorized the use of American air power to back up the Syrian rebels who we trained of which there are 60 in his war in the war against not isis but against assad and take a guess who obama's syrian rebels are fighting alongside to take out assad with the u.s air force isis i told you that's why american warplanes have never been used to blow up the isis convoys i told you that's why israel has not blown up the isis convoys i saw through this months ago as horrendous as isis is they are an ally of the United States and Israel, whether you know it or not, according to not what I think, but what I see going on. Now, if that makes sense to you, explain it to me. Why would the United States of America actively help ISIS defeat Assad when Assad, as horrendous as he is, does not pose an existential threat to the United States of America? Why would they support ISIS, which allegedly wants to conquer the world? Why? 
What kind of madness is this? It's getting very difficult to understand how the people can watch this going on and not even know what's going on. But I guess they count upon pundits like myself to explain it to them. And I'm serious about that. I mean, many of you read the, uh, the esteemed uh, writers in this Atlantic and the Schmelantic, the New Yorker, the Who Yorker, the Me Yorker, I'm a Yorker, I'm a Corker, I'm a Squawker. You read all of those things. But, you know, sometimes 10,000 words is harder to understand than a few choice uh, words which explain it all. The world is a crazy place. It's getting sicker. Pictures of hunters posing with dead animals that make you want to hunt them down. I mean, forget Cecil the Lion, now there's a sick woman uh, hunting uh, basically captive animals thinking that they're brave and tough. It's sickening. These are, these are psychopaths, basically. These are homicidal psychopaths who gussy up their homicidal urges by hunting defenseless large animals on private reserves in Africa. Albeit that some of these animals are old and will die eventually or near, let's say, the end of their lifespan, to permit them to be hunted like this, in some cases injured, not killed, suffering for hours if not days before the human beasts finally finish them off, is an example of homicidal human beings, incidentally. We're talking about all the news uh, of the day. And here's one that should make even the most ardent Obama watcher say this can't be true. The uh, Obama administration has signaled it may intervene next week in a civil lawsuit in which 11 American families won a potential billion-dollar judgment from the Palestinian leadership over a series of bombings and shootings by Palestinians that killed or wounded dozens of U.S. citizens, right? The families won a $218 million judgment in February after a seven-week trial in Manhattan Federal Court in which a jury found that the PLO and Palestinian Authority were responsible for a string of attacks from 01 to 04 to kill 33 injured hundreds. A 1992 law that requires damages in such cases to be tripled, as well as interest on the award, would push it to as much as $1.1 billion. Well, take a guess which side the Obama administration is on. The Palestinians, of course. Would you expect it to be on the side of the families injured by the Palestinians? Last month, the Department of Injustice, which had previously not been involved in the 11-year-old case, informed the court it was considering filing a statement of interest in the case. So there it is. There's your new Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, appointed by Al Sharpton personally, throwing in with the PLO against Americans who lost property and family to terrorist bombings by the PLO. There is an administration which claims to be fighting terror, planning to weigh in, favor of the terrorists there's your obama administration so when i ask you if you're a democrat why you won't vote for hillary i'm telling you to think very carefully about which democrat is much different than hillary and i also raised another issue which is why is your president obama suddenly authorizing the use of air power u.s air power at that off our carriers to support the Syrian rebels that we trained, 60 of them in total, by the way, to fight not ISIS, but to fight Assad. What in the world is going on? Can you follow this? The U.S. Air Force is finally going to weigh in on the war against not ISIS, but against Assad, who is fighting ISIS. So which side is the United States on? I've told you for a long time now, this is crazy. And I also told you that the reason ISIS has not been de decimated by Israel or the United States is because they're actually a de facto army of both parties in my estimation. They certainly don't like the kidnapping, they don't like the murder, they don't like the slavery, but governments are so corrupt and so cynical that they consider kidnapping, murder, and enslavement, I get, and beheading, setting people on fire in cages, as collateral damage, I suppose. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Michael, are you there? Hello, Dr. Savage. Good afternoon. Okay, you're, what's your, uh, what's, yeah, okay, what's on your mind? Uh, on my mind this evening is uh, there's a big problem going on in, in Coney Island, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I was born and raised there 25 years, 
And uh, from what I see, the neighborhood just been going.